Please support this channel by giving this video a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and turn on alerts for more videos like this one. Today we're going to review pivot tables. They're used to summarize, sort, reorganize, group, count, total, or average of data stored in a database. It allows users to transform columns into rows and rows into columns. It allows grouping by any data field. So I created this sample workbook, and what we have here is a data sheet which has a date, order number, sales rep, city, item code, description, quantity, cost, unit price, and total sales. So to get started on a pivot table, we would go up to insert, and it'll give us two options. Pivot table, which is a blank pivot table, and recommended pivot tables. So let's highlight our data. And we'll go to recommended pivot tables. And you can see here it gave us a few options. So the first one is uh, sum of cost by description. So you can see our row labels here. So our different products we have and the sum of the cost. You can see the second one here, sum of unit price by description. So again, our different products we have and what the unit price is. So again, I'll give you a few examples. Now there might be one here that works for you. Um, if not, uh, we'll just hit cancel and we'll create one from a blank pivot table. So now we're gonna highlight our table again. And we're gonna go back up to the top and we're gonna go to, um, sorry, pivot table to do a blank one. I'm gonna click on it. This pop-up window comes up and it's gonna ask us to select the table or range, which we've already done, and then a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. So we're just going to use a new worksheet and we're going to hit OK. And you can see a new worksheet was created. And on the left hand side here, we have our blank pivot table space. And on our right hand side, we have the list of fields from our original tables. So the date, order number, sales rep, city, item code, description, quantity, cost, unit price, and total sales. And below that, we have the area for the pivot table. So the filters, the column, the rows, and the values. Okay, so part of it was blocked out, again, because of my camera. So we have the filters, the columns, the rows, and the values down here below. So first off, let's get a sales rep. You can see when I click on it, it automatically goes under rows. So you can see here it's listed. If you don't like that layout, you can always move it over to columns and then they're listed right across the top there. Let's go back to rows. And this time we will get a value. So let's just do total sales. You can see it's all listed here. The other thing we do is come up here to filters. If we do that, then the total sales is here. Uh, we can also collect on here. Instead of doing all, we can just select Brooklyn and now it's just Brooklyn sales come in here. So again, you have a lot of options. You can play around with it. We can hit all, go back here. And let's say we also want to get the unit price. The unit price clicks in there. So really, the best thing to do is just play around with it. See what fits what you're looking for when you're trying to customize and uh, pull in the data uh, and what best works for you. Okay, so let's say I want to get my total profitability broken down by each item. So what I can do is remove the information here, come up to uh, description, I can add in the item code, I do total sales and the cost. Then come up to my pivot table and I'm gonna to wanna to click on fields, items and sets, calculate field, I'm going to name it. And I'm going to scroll down and select total sales. Insert field. So again, I'm just inserting, inserting a formula right now. Minus the cost. Insert. Hit OK. And as you can see here, my profits came up. And also it showed in the pivot table fields as well. So you can 
click it and unclick it and it shows you what your profits are. The other thing I can do is just format my data just by highlighting it. Go to the home, can add a comma, just makes it look really good. I can even add the dollar signs because these are sales data. Next, what I want to show you is just let me uncheck all these. And let's go by item description. And I want to see how many units of each that I sold. So we'll click on quantity. So one thing I can do is I can actually just click here and go sort largest to smallest. Another trick is I can right click on it and I can show value as. So let's say I want to see the percentage of each item that was sold and I can go percentage of column total and you can see there that I have my percentages for each item that I've sold. So really you can play around with the data, you can manipulate it. Um, there's a lot of good tools and functions in here uh, that you can utilize. So another thing you can do is you can actually add charts to your pivot table. And this will really visual show you what's going on with the data. So we can highlight it here, go into our pivot table analysis tool bar, and then click on pivot chart. And you can see there's a lot of different options here. Again, I'm doing a percentage one, so I probably want to use a pie chart. You have different options for you to see your data. You can click this one here, hit OK. And you can see it broke it up for percentages for us by product item. So visually, it's a really good tool to have. You can customize the chart, add different colors you want to it, add a, a title to the chart. Uh, we can even go back in and let's say we want to select a different style chart. Hit OK. Another thing you can do is you can actually change up the data. So I can highlight total sales, remove quantity. You know, you can have the unit price in there. You can add the cost. You can see it just populates the, uh, the chart automatically for you. So one last thing I want to show you is down here you'll see defer layout update and what that does is if you have that checked off and you go to make a change you can see nothing is happening here um, until you hit update as soon as you hit update it makes the change now why would you want to do that well if you have a lot of data uh, like a lot large da data set and um, you're just trying to play around and get your your table all set up um, you might want to uh, not update it right away because it could take your computer a long time to process it. Um, so this is a great option for you to do if you're using large data sets. Thank you again for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and support this channel by hitting the subscribe button and turn on alerts for more Excel videos like this one. If you click the link above, you're going to watch a video on the XLOOKUP function. Have a good day.